What's good, Homer Squad? It's your boy, Homer Ziggy. We back here with another reaction. And hey, we back with another Luesta, Luesta, Luesta video. Sorry, I keep pronouncing his name wrong. But we got another video by him, and this one is called Rap's Most Embarrassing Beefs. And in the description where it says, Today, we look at some rappers who got humiliated in a beef by their opponent and as you will see a lot of these rappers just do it to themselves and a hey, all i can say is in the way of how this whole thing with drake and such because recent like i just reacted to his like wagwan delilah if you haven't it's literally my last reaction before this one and such go check it out where i put jamaican reacts to this and such and a hey, y'all going crazy in the comments and still is so a hey, i feel like if i don't see this one and look i can tell you this part and look knowing that how rap beefs are and such i guarantee you like it says in the description most of them do it to themselves, or it's the other artists doing it to them but either way sometimes you can know when you're losing the beef by how you moving right now during it or after the beef because sometimes you look like a clown so hey we'll see who embarrassed themselves the most in this make sure you like comment and subscribe follow me on all my socials up there and without further ado let's get into the video dissing another rapper is one of the most dangerous things you can do in hip-hop Depending on how you do it and what response comes your way, it could be damaging to your whole career. Because when you find yourself on the losing end and the world is all laughing at you, or even worse, feeling sorry for you, then it can be pretty hard to come back from. My Facts. name is Luesta, and these Luesta. are some of the most embarrassing beefs in Luesta. Rap. Although it's probably hard for his fans to hear, the most recent masterclass on how not to handle conflict yep, came Jay from none Cole. other than J. Cole. You're probably yep. familiar with how this all got started by now. But to jog your memory, Drake and Cole dropped the track First Person Shooter a couple months back. In the song, the Dreamville Kingpin saluted not only himself and Drizzy, but k -Dot as well as the big three of rap. When they argue the hardest MC, is it kick that is it Aubrey or me? We the big three like we started a league, but right now I feel like Muhammad Ali. Even though he also did call himself Muhammad Ali, it seemed like yes. a legitimate call for all of them to coexist. But Kendrick had no plans for that, and dropped his incredible verse on Future and Metro Boomin's Like That, which <laughs> took aim at Cole and Drake in a vicious fashion, where he yeah. claimed, mother the big three, it's just big, big me. me nigga, After that went down, all eyes fell to Drake and Cole, as the rules of the game dictated that they need to respond to that kind of call out. Particularly Cole, who, for the past couple of years, has been rhyming about how he would eviscerate any MC who came his I mean, way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, hey, <laughs> look. And granted, still, it is this. Look, we still disheartened that he did back out and such before the nigga even dropped a response to him. Imagine that you dropped a response and such to that like that verse, and then. As soon as when you drop yours, you didn't even wait it until Kendrick dropped his to you. So it's kind of crazy. So yeah. The best. So Cole did just that, dropping seven minute drill at the conclusion of his surprise project entitled Might Delete Later. And after the diss arrived, people did hope that they really would remove it as they weren't really feeling it. Particularly when so many of his critiques of K-Dot were just invalid. First shit was classic, your last shit was tragic. Good Kid Mad City classic. Mr. Morale tragic, how? It was one of Kendrick's boldest, most experimental, most adventurous albums yet. Your second shit put dudes to sleep, but they gassed it. Deepab! Being boring is like the core criticism you could make of most of J. Cole's catalog. After the public pretty- I don't think nobody should take Fantano's opinion easy because the fact that he said he likes it to look this is just me and i don't care what any of y'all say the fact that this nigga is gonna criticize j cole and such when he likes the like of sexy red and such i'm sorry he can't talk now maybe at the time of when that happened and now maybe he's changed his mind or maybe he hasn't but all i'm just saying for me 
Fantano, he's the last person to ever criticize anybody after you said that you like Sexy Red's music. So look, that's all I'm saying. Dudes to sleep, but they gassed it. Deepab! Being boring is like the core criticism you could make of most of J. Cole's catalog. After the public pretty much roasted his response, Cole got on stage at his own Dreamville festival and shocked the whole world when he did the unthinkable by apologizing. I'm so proud of that project, except for one part that make me feel like, man, that's the lamest shit I ever did in my hmm. life. In my spirit of trying to, like, get this music out, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I moved in a way that was that I feel spiritually feel bad on me. Like, like I try to like jab my back and I try to keep it friendly. But at the end of the day, when I listen to it and when it comes out and I see the talk, that shit don't sit right with my spirit. That shit disrupts my peace. As he told the world that he regretted the whole thing, the occasional fan praised him for his maturity. Low key, Cole probably realized he strayed away from how he started and wanted a reset. I don't even know how and at what point he started writing those aggressive bars he has been doing for the past few years. He made his name off the humble storytelling bars. This whole I'll smoke a rapper energy came out of nowhere. But for hip hop as a whole, this was a totally terrible move. How you apologize to the who this you? It called you trash. Correct, like crazy, like on that part. How you gonna diss and how you gonna apologize for a nigga who dissed you and such, which is crazy. Like that's what I'm saying. On one hand, yeah, he might have matured and all, but for like on the hip hop side of things, he dissed you first. How are you gonna apologize to him when you're the one who when he's the one who dissed you? How are you gonna apologize when you're the when he's the one who dissed you first? How does that make sense? Totally terrible move. How you apologize to the who dissed you? It called you trash. It called your discography a light back. Like I am sad, just the competitive spirit of the thing. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh man, you told me all this time you was ready for this, you wanted this, you was looking for the in the daytime with a flashlight, you the best, keep comparing me these, this is a facade, they not who they say, you tell me all this and then you do that. In the eyes of some, Cole had left them feeling betrayed. Can never come back from this. He gotta cut his dreads, <laughs> he gotta go back to waves, this gotta do so much rebranding after last night, he gotta go back to college, he has to do another point. Once thought to be on the same oh, side as now. Drake and the beef, Cole then muddied things even further when he showed up on Future and Metro's sequel to the project that he was dissed on in the first place. As a result, people don't know where to stand with him at the moment. Ayo, hey, Cole got me confused right now. How you sneak this for years and then when he actually disses you and Drake on Future's album, you respond and apologize for the response, then hop on Future's next album. If you were trying to lose fans so you can live more peacefully in society, congratulations, you're doing great. When faced with competition from a friend and peer he respected, Cole proved that the competitive drive he once thought he had was missing. However, when we consider the course of events that happened later in this video, you'll see that J. Cole may have actually made a good decision in opting out of this beef. As I a guess, result, yeah. this has registered as one of the biggest, if not the biggest, L in a career. As in the past, Cole has been the man who's left other rappers scrambling to recover and escape a run-in with the Ville's finest with their careers intact. Seriously, I mean, just look at what happened to Lil Pump. I mean, the hey. whole thing yeah, like for real, I was just gonna say like, hey, he was the nigga who literally predicted Pump's career in the, in five years and such. <laughs> who can remember the 19, 1985, uh, like bro, the fact that with that song, 1980, the fact that there's a thing called the 1985 effect, that's literally named after J. Cole for what he was going at the likes of Lil Pump smoke perp and so and such yeah the fact that he called that to a capital t hey thing started out of nowhere back when he was on his come up the floridian rapper decided to take some shots at the dreamville ceo on a track simply titled fuck j cole <laughs> Though that's maybe a sentiment some people share after he apologized to K-Dot, that really wasn't the case back then. So with Cole unwilling to take that kind of slander from a rapper miles below him, Lil Pump got thoroughly sunned on 1985. Yep. A track which basically buried an entire generation of SoundCloud rappers, Cole outlined what the future would look like for- Hold on now. Hold on. Let me say- Hold on. Basically buried an entire generation of SoundCloud- So, for the certain rappers. 
I'll repeat a little peep. I didn't know much about his music. Now I can't. Now look, Trippy Red. I don't know about that. Look, Uzi. I definitely don't know about that because he still does. He's still around because Uzi's still around. And S Ski Mask for shit sure not. Mm mm. Cause he ain't a nah. The only so for I don't know how a little peeps career would have been. So I'm gonna exclude him. But for the likes of Trippy Red, Lil Uzi, and Ski Mask, mm mm. To me, no. He didn't sun them. They still popping. But for Lil Pump, for shit sure. And Smoke Perp, you forgot to add in him there. SoundCloud rappers, Cole outlined what the future would look like for Pump once the buzz of tracks like Gucci Gang tapered off, yeah. saying, I know you think this type of revenue is never ending, but I wanna take a minute just to tell you that ain't true. true. One day the kids is listening gonna grow up and get too old for that shit that makes you grow up. Facts. Now your show's looking like cause they don't show up, which unfortunately mean the money's Real slow up. Now you scrambling and hoping to get hot again mm. But you forgot you only pop cause you was riding trees Back, Now you was. old news and you going through regrets Cause you never bought that house but you got a Benz And a bunch of even though he got thoroughly sunned on 1985, Pump responded with more hate for Cole. Wisely, he didn't do it on a track this time. Wow, you get so much props. You just a 17 year old. <laughs> Lame ass jit. Looking to be the nigga. <laughs> it, not, it didn't matter if you was a 27 year old. You got sunned, nigga. And look, who's listening to Lil Pump now? Exactly. <laughs> no one. A bigger person, Cole then sat down for a special filmed conversation. And, and suddenly... And the fact that he even sat down with your dumb ass and such tried to sit things out. But even so with that, he still... You still ain't relevant to this All day, that chaotic nigga. bravado we were used to seeing from the Yes Get It rapper disappeared. <clears throat> but now, I kind of get it. Because, like, we make different type of music, so people, like, they'll feel some type of way, like, oh, f*** this, f*** that. <laughs> When I started doing that, people were just like, fuck it, you know? That was like basically like the trend, like, you know? Everybody saying fuck J. Cole, whatever, blah, blah. It wasn't even like serious, like, I f*** mm. this shit, that shit's hard. Since then... So how you going So nigga... See? Yeah, uh, sometimes that's what I always feel like with most rappers, that whenever they have this whole bravado and such, it always be a character they always put on. Like, bro. Why? At this point, don't. That's why I always say, if you're just gonna be yourself, be yourself, nigga. Cause it's not all the times you gotta act all gangster and such. That's why. I, I'll, that's why. If, that's why. If anyhow, I'm a rapper. If I was ever to be a rapper, nigga, I'm just gonna be me. I'm not saying I'm tough, but I ain't saying I'm pussy either. I ain't saying I'm soft either. Sometimes I'll know when to want to scrap with you, and sometimes I'll know when to not want to scrap with you because, one, I don't want to fuck the money up, or two, you're not, like, respectively saying, you're not worth my time. And it's not to be ego and such, like, literally. I'm only going to see you once or twice out of my whole entire career. So, yeah, that's why I wouldn't, that's why most of the times whenever I see rappers, who always want to have this like still tough gangster rapper image and all that I'd be like nigga calm down like you're not even the streets no more you on you you in the you in like this music industry making music getting your monies and all that Chuck you ain't gotta hacked all hard all the time cause no diddy but yeah no that was like basically like the trend like you know about saying fuck J. Cole, whatever, blah, blah. It was even like serious, like, I f with your shit, that shit's hard. Since then, Pump's career has been in a tailspin. After his original gimmick stopped selling tickets, he had a brief stint as a Trump rapper and even tried to do some metal style tracks, but nothing has stuck. And after his first two records were certified gold, his third album, Lil Pump 2, failed to chart at all. Leaving many to claim that J. Cole's prediction yeah, came true. Definitely. Not above throwing shots at a wounded opponent, Cole referenced Lil Pump's fall off on the 2021 track Lion King on Ice, where he explained why he tried to reason with Pump back then. In the aftermath of all this, Pump seems to be the only guy who doesn't know it's over for him, <laughs> or the role that coming at Cole did in determining his downfall. Do you feel like he predicted kind of like what ended up happening with your rap career? Nope. 
No. Because I'm still here. Lil Pump doesn't want- You might be still here, but you still ain't here here. Yeah, you can still- There's a difference between still being here and being irrelevant. Relevant, I mean. Because, nigga, like I said, ain't nobody bumping no Lil Pump music or there's no Lil Pump music playing in the club. Not one bit. I want to admit J. Cole was right. And shout out to Kev for asking that question. Imagine how much more respect Pump would have got if he would have just said J. Cole was right. And I was young at the time. Instead of acting like he's still popping. Yeah, SMH. Like, Here, we see what J. Cole is capable of when he really wants to sink his claws into someone in a beef. But as embarrassing as that was, Cole actually isn't the only GOAT contender to backtrack in a beef mm. or apologize. As when Jay-Z came at the mm. legendary Nas, he was forced to come back with his cap in his hand. During his early career, Hove had developed a reputation for ruthlessness that made you think nothing was off limits when he was in a beef. During his feud with Mob Deep, for example, Hove delved into Prodigy's past and put a picture of him as a dancer on the Summer Jam screen. And when he started engaging in a beef with Nas, no one expected him to ever crumble. It all started with a few shots back and forth between Nas and Rockefeller protege, Memphis Bleak. But when it came time for Jay to release the landmark album The Blueprint, Jay decided to diss Nas himself claiming that he only had one hit album every 10 years. After that, he hinted at his relationship with Carmen Bryan, an ex-girlfriend of Nas's and his baby mama. But as good as the diss was, the rap game basically changed when Nas decided to drop his response on Ether, widely regarded oh, yeah. as one of the greatest diss tracks of yeah. all time. Cause even though, cause and I'm hearing that even though that beat is whack, A. It's basically like this. If you want me to react to Ether and such, let me know in the comments. Because cause the thing, like I said before, y'all, I I, I'm going to keep on saying to y'all until when y'all registered in here and y'all going to probably get at me saying, how you did not know that and such? Because, nigga, most of my life, I was, look, born and raised Jamaican, so most of my life, I didn't know about the whole hip-hop culture and such. So nine times out of ten, I try to learn bits by bits and such. From not only reactors, but certain things, but like on my own time and such. So it's not, so if you come to me with certain music stats or whatnot and such, I'll be like, I did not know that. Honest to God. So I don't want nobody roasting me and such, but with that being said, if you want me to react to Ether and such, let me know in the comments below. But as good as the diss was, the rap game basically changed when Nas decided to drop his response on Ether. Widely regarded as one of the greatest diss tracks of all time, the track swept through the industry and the streets alike. And from the outset, Jay couldn't handle the heat. And hmm. even people like Raskas remember him freaking out about the track in public. They played Ether in the club and Jay was heated. And I remember that. I just remember he saying, Dame, like, yo, tell that nigga to turn that shit off. But the <laughs> club was going up. And that's Damn. when I knew it was over. And the DJ was not. He was like, F that. And he played that shit. And the club went up. And and that's when I knew Nas won. I mean, hey, that just... That just solidifies it. If anyhow, when your district is in the club and saying the the artist that the that the song was ten to and such, the district that was ten to is there, and the G and you telling the DJ to turn it off, and he's saying, and the DJ's telling you now nah, that we're gonna keep this shit playing and such, and the club's going crazy over it. Yeah, I would be pissed too. So yeah, that means that nigga definitely won. You not about to play that diss track while I'm here, and when I'm telling you to turn that shit off, you're not gonna turn it off? And you want me? Nah, if all that. <laughs> and the club went up. And if all and that's of when that. Nah, it's why the streets had spoken. The DJ played it, and Jay was in the building. Looking to try and fire back. Hove unveiled Super Ugly, a diss track which really focused on him hooking up with Carmen Bryan in a pretty graphic fashion. I came in your belly back seat, Damn. skeeted in your cheek, left condoms on your baby seat. She was kissing my dick when you was kissing her. Oh. Despite that being a pretty savage bar which could have maybe turned the tide in the beef, all the momentum he could have had died down. When his mom made him apologize for the diss live on air during an interview with Angie Martinez, mom put in a call and said that went too far, Jay said at the time. And she's never, ever called me about music. 
So I was like, okay, 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 I'll shut it down. <laughs> Once again, I apologize, he said. I feel like I didn't think about women's feelings or Nasa's former girlfriend's feelings or even my mom. It was really like, let me meet your level of disrespect with this level of disrespect. And Come on now. Uh-uh. Nah. I'm s Look, we're all, with all due respect, mm-mm. Even if my mom heard me dissing somebody on a song, and look, you gotta remember, we I'm a Jamaican, so trust me. If you, if you know anything about all Jamaican culture, trust me. You know that if you try to if you try to slang insults our way, we're gonna sling him back and it don't matter who you is. You gonna get these insults one way or another. Whether it's by verbal or musically, you gonna get these insults. Even and even and even if you're a pitney like me, the mom would tell you for well, not saying all moms will, but all I'm saying is the mom would definitely have your back. Mom. It was really like, let me meet your level of disrespect with this level of disrespect. An apology which aired on Hot 97 and was heard by the entirety of New York. Angie Martinez said something was really different about Jay when he had to do that. He was not comfortable. And you saw all the interviews, I had interviewed him maybe four or five times yeah. already by that right. point in our careers. Right. And I, he was always, you know, always confident, always whatever, ran the but show. I think he said something from his mom. It right? was the, yeah, he said his mother heard and was like, why would you say that? You know, he, he was... I guess she was disappointed in him for some of the things he said in Super Ugly, so he apologized. But what I remember about that day, and for me, what I don't know, just was a moment was after, because I felt bad. I never seen him like somewhat defeated and right. back in that. Years later, this would be viewed as the moment that Hove lost. And according to his former partner turned enemy, Dame Dash, it even had an impact on Rockefeller Records as a whole. And when he went and apologized and shit, I was like, oh, I was hitting him from <laughs> okay. the thing like, get off the radio, we looking crazy. Years later, the two would reconcile. But the shadow of the beef still looked over both men's careers. But while this beef was very real, and the damage done was the result of both men getting in their feelings, there are other times when rappers managed to embarrass themselves without anyone's help. Just look at what happened to the game during his feud with Eminem. Oh my both god, yeah. Of Dr. Yeah, bro, this part, yeah, the game really did it to himself here. This nigga really talking about how he wanted to go against the, go against Eminem and such. And think that he could take him. And what's so crazy is, for a nigga who says that he think he don't bump Eminem in his car, nigga, on his... The black slim shady, a freaking, what was it what, 10 minutes or so? Nigga. 10, 16 minutes or so, something like that. Nigga. Every single stanza, every single melody was a, was literally all Eminem right there and there. Yeah. The game really... Mm. To Dre, Shady and the Compton rapper were never on bad terms. They even collaborated on We Ain't from the game's album entitled The Document. And even when he and 50 Cent had their whole conflict where he was kicked out of G-Unit, Game always said he had the utmost respect for M. Eminem is Eminem. He's, if you notice in hip hop, Eminem is the only rapper that, that nobody ever wants a problem with. Including myself, man. Eminem is like the most lyrically insane. Despite the fact that the Compton MC has been involved in so many conflicts with other rappers over the years, and previously said he wasn't an instigator. I don't f with Nick, I don't battle Nick, I don't beef with Nick, I don't start shit. Unless I hear my name or unless a nigga calling me out, then I'm coming. Game would disprove all of that after he was left out of the Super Bowl halftime show, which featured Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, and a whole host of other guest stars, including Eminem. After it went down, Game was clearly salty about Shady being there and him sitting at home as it went down in his home. And the fact that he got jealous because it was a whole bunch of, well, I was gonna say comp, because Snoop was from. Comp was well not was from California the down the down part of California. Dr. Dre was, Kendrick was, but mostly, but because of how the relationship was in such. But hey, it's just so crazy that this nigga really got salty just because Eminem, just because just because they saying about how he was saying about how I was like a block down over and whatnot, nigga. If nobody wanted you there, nobody wanted you there. 
That's it. Down, Gang was clearly salty about Shady being there and him sitting at home as it went down in his home city. We on the West Coast are the only because that have uh, this crab in the barrel mentality where we want to keep down. Snoop is an icon. Dre is an icon. M is an icon, but M is not from L.A. 50 is not from L.A. And I'm not taking away from the fact that they were on the Super Bowl, but L.A. have been on a Detroit Super Bowl or a New York Super Bowl. It just wouldn't have happened. L.A. So, nigga, so you need to tell me that if saying if they were at, so if they were to have a Super Bowl in like either New York or Detroit, how would that be? And you would want to be there? I don't know. Nigga, does it even freaking matter? We got some of the... Go the fact that he's being salty about that, Drew, because he's from L.A. Kendrick's from L.A. Snoop is from... Well, no, was it? Ken yeah, Kendrick was from L.A. Snoop is from L.A. Dre is from L.A. But Drew, because 50 and Eminem ain't from L.A., they can't perform? Nigga. Get out your feet. Yeah, he was definitely in his feelings. Been in that. Detroit Super Bowl or New York Super Bowl. It just wouldn't have happened. L.A., 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 all around the Super Bowl, and I don't get the call. I was hurt by that. After that, the whole tone of how the game responded to Eminem changed in an episode of The Drink Champ, where he would go on to make a very bad decision. Very bad. I like Eminem. He's one of the fucking good MCs. He rapped better. I used to think Eminem was better than me. He not that was when you know he was going to fuck up his career. Because the minute he said, I used to, yeah, because already, and people were saying that he was probably drunk on that episode. Maybe he was, maybe he was, because look at the, look at the drinks there, nigga. He was, he probably, he probably was drunk off his ass. But it's one thing to be drunk and probably say some shit like that. But when you act, but when he was actually sobered up and actually went with it, with the whole black slim shady shit. Mm, mm. Eminem, he's one of the fucking good MCs. He raps better. I used to think Eminem was better than me. He not. He not. He's not. Hmm. Challenge it. It's not drama. I want to smoke with Eminem, him and him. The game would go on to diss Eminem multiple times after this, saying things like no one plays Eminem songs in the club, to much oh, weird stuff, like creeping on his daughter's IG pics. I did not know that. Why the hell would he do that? Why the hell would he do that? The result of that desire for smoke was the track, The Black Slim Shady. Yeah, a diss track from the game that also seemed to be praising him more than anything. Yeah, like, why the hell? Like, that diss track did not make any sense. In a diss track, you're supposed to be dissing somebody. Not praising them in such. That makes no sense. As a result, fans were confused by what the point was, and later down the line, he'd make it clear that he was just in his feelings. Throwing shots at Eminem and beefing with Eminem, it was just me being upset with Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre can't out-rap me, so I just went at M, just because that's just how I get sometimes. But it's always competitive. It ain't like I'm gonna see M and be like, what's up now? You know what I'm saying? Me. You know what I'm saying? And then M took his shots on <laughs> uh, a record that dropped. And uh, yo, M is, M is, M is a funny guy. After all that effort from the game, M only needed a couple of bars to put the former Aftermath artist back in his place on the song The Realist. And that is the only retort, is I'm not played in the club. Uh, motherfucker, put a fork in it. The only reason they still play your shit in the club uh, is because you still perform in the and Bro, and bro, when I read, hey, if you haven't, go check out my reaction to that boy. He silenced everybody up. The game, Melly Mel. But mostly the game, cause nigga, he shut your ass up for real with that one. <laughs> cause, and that makes a difference between him and Eminem. That nigga, you wanna talk about how my music ain't playing in the club? The reason why you think that, cause nigga, you still get performing them. My shits are playing in stadiums, in arenas, on the radio, and all that shit. Is one. Nobody say you can't play the music in the club. I can't. I'm not saying that at all. Cause it'll be still fire. But if your music ain't up to the level where it not only plays in clubs but on radio shows, on arenas, in stadiums, all around worldwide and shit, then I'm sorry. Like it said, motherfucker, put a quirk in it. <laughs> 
Travis plays on the song The Real Is. And that is the only retort is I'm not playing in the club. Motherfucker, Motherfucker put a fork in it. Only reason is to play your shit in the club. Why? It's cause you still perform in the in that situation, Game was left looking pretty stupid. But it was nothing compared to what happened when Drake stepped in the ring with Pusha T. Ah, Back shit. in the day before he was a superstar in his own right, Drizzy yeah, was a big fan one of was Clips. Insane. In particular, Pusha T himself. Yeah, I was looking for like autograph stuff from Clips because I was like a really, really big Clips fan. Some search words led me to this guy in Virginia. We had a, a microphone that Pusha T used during the show. It was like plastic, but it had his autograph on it. I used to pretend I was doing interviews on the red carpet and uh, perform all the clip songs in my basement with the mic at the time it meant the world to me but once he became linked up to young money he would inherit what was lil wayne's long-standing feud with clips which started over who got to wear bait seriously if i ever have to do a breakdown of the pettiest reasons for beef that'll be near the top of the list anyway yeah let's face it and shit that don't even have to be in music do you know how many motherfuckers out here beef over certain little petty shit like bro if I, so the fact that they beefing over freaking clothing wear a b babe nigga freaking clothes nigga y'all beef they beefing over clothes i'm like nah nigga sometimes sometimes when it comes to these rap beefs i don't know it be the it be the most either littlest minor shit or the petty shit like the most little shit that they beef over or the most petty shit they beefing over. The fact that these niggas were beefing over a freaking bape. Freaking jackets, nigga. Crazy. And in feud with clips, which started over who got to wear bape. Seriously, who had to, if I have to, to do a one. breakdown of the pettiest reasons for beef, that'll be near the top of the list. Anyway, once he signed up to Easy, Pusha and Drake exchanged a lot of shots. From tracks like Tuscan Leather to HGTV Freestyle, they exchanged little jabs over the years. Pusha would shade Drake's contracts, Drizzy would say that Push was never a drug lord as he claimed, and so it went on until May of 2018 when Push unveiled Infrared, a track which brought up Drizzy's ghostwriting rumors with bars yeah. like, how could you ever write your wrongs? When you don't even write your songs the stage was set for a full but then you know what came along the story of added on battle shortly after drake dropped w freestyle a song True. which took aim at both pusha and kanye but his one major flaw was making it personal with push when he decided to drop his fiance's name in the track oh. where he said i told you keep playing with my name and i'ma let it ring on you like virginia williams oh, and yeah, if you know that. anything about hip-hop you know it's a cardinal sin to mention someone's wife or family in a song at the very if they ain't even involved if they're not involved in this shit you don't mention the family that right there is a mm, that's a no no time people probably figured pusha was gonna clap back pretty hard but they had no way of knowing just how hard he would come at <laughs> yeah. drake on the With now infamous song stories story added, added on where he yeah, unveiled the existence of drake's secret <laughs> child with former x-rated star sophie Purcell. it's safe to say that this news brought hip-hop to a complete standstill while the research photo like, of drake and black first that part was crazy right that one was this right here was crazy when we all saw it like with the blackface and all that that was crazy but then later on where he talked about how the sun and such hey put if it wasn't for pusha t we wouldn't be seeing at it adonis right now if it wasn't for him we wouldn't be seeing adonis right now blackface on the cover didn't exactly help either you are hiding a child let that boy come home dead beat motherfucker playing border, border patrol, patrol. dead beat mother Hope that ain't real. You got kids, nigga? Yep. Ooh, shit. Shit! Oh my god! You really have to fight this nigga! Push it! Push it! I gotta fight you, nigga! This ain't even directly me! You gotta fight me! This, this is disrespectful! Alongside ruining Drake's plans to unveil his son as part of an Adidas campaign, the move basically destroyed Drake's image as the kind of guy a woman wanted to be with. And considering this was a big part of his image, this was devastating from Push. As a result, Drake had nothing to do but to concede a defeat. It was a genius yep. play in the game of chess and definitely, you know, warranted my first quote unquote, you know, loss in the competitive sport of 
of rapping by choice, obviously, because I, 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 I bowed out after realizing like the gap between us allowed him to drop, you know, a bomb on the world that really became it. That was all that was that was all anyone cared about. And Thanks. although Jay Prince claimed that he prevented things from intensifying, the fact that he was told by another man not to respond didn't reflect well on him. Yeah. Yeah, when a lot of that when I realized too, like a lot of people were saying about how if it wasn't for Jada Prince telling him not to risk, if it wasn't for J, basically that if Jada Prince would have told him not to respond and such, or that Jada Prince told him not to respond, nigga, you should have responded back. Yeah, I, and I can see why most people wasn't rocking with that decision and such. Like what, nigga? This nigga just drop a bomb on you and you don't want to respond back? Tensifying. Crazy. The fact that he was told by another man not to respond didn't reflect well on him. All in all, the whole situation left one massive stain in Drake's legacy. As while well, he had previously gained a lot of respect for taking down Meek Mill, which I've talked about extensively on my channel, it proved that he could be beaten. As a result, Pusha is savoring his victory to this day. Even when Drake yeah. released his diss track titled Push Ups, which took shots at everyone from Kendrick to Metro Boomin and The Weeknd, people till this day are still mentioning the fact that Drake still hasn't responded to Push. I just wanted yeah. to- Yeah, it's crazy. Like after all these years, after the story of Added On, you can be in a diss track with everybody else all you want, including the one we just saw recently. But the fact that you still haven't responded to the day of that story of added on nigga yeah people are definitely gonna people are definitely gonna be on your ass about that till the day till the day it fizzes out and think about it that shit was from 2018 we in 2024 five five no six years now almost ha almost a half a decade six years nigga and a lot of shit has been happening to you over the past six years. And you need to tell me at this point, you still haven't responded to that shit? Crazy. That's all I'm saying. To this day, are still mentioning the fact that Drake still hasn't responded to Push. I just wanted to point out that after all these years of mob talk by Drake, mm. nobody ever laid a finger on Pusha T. Not a pinky now. However, Drake did not take that advice. And when he responded to Kendrick's euphoria mm. by dropping his song, oh, Family yeah. Matters, the Six God officially crossed the line with thought. As he falsely accused Kendrick of putting the beats on his wife, oh, yeah. who he also claimed had an affair with Kendrick's longtime friend and business partner, Day Free. As Kendrick said not to tell a lie about him and he won't tell the truth about you, <laughs> he actually Don't tell no lies about me, and I won't tell about and I won't tell no truth about you. Woo! Boy, if that ain't such a out of all shit with the way how he wants to bring up Ke drake one put on captions and such nigga that's a caption for your ass <laughs> Still yeah, drake, i know what my title of this video is going to be and hell you saw the you even saw the thumbnail when most of y'all was watching it that freaking kendrick was putting up saying drake pack yeah art i gotta say drake got it the worst <laughs> With that, Kendrick has been coming for Drake's neck ever since. And he literally dropped three tracks within 48 hours of the release, targeting Drake and completely tearing apart his character mm. at any given moment. Kendrick's Peace. disses are all very personal and make crazy accusations about Drake, such as the fact that he's a PDF file and that multiple people in his entourage are predators as well. Facts. Where Drake was once begging Kendrick to drop and telling people like academics that he was waiting 10 years to go back and forth with Kendrick, his fans are now begging him to stop and Kendrick is now beating Drake at his own game. Since the song dropped, Kendrick Lamar's Not Like Us has gone Ooh. number one on the Billboard charts, became the most yeah. streamed song in one day on Spotify, Facts. and also Crazy. became the most streamed song in a week in Spotify history. And in Drake fashion, Kendrick Lamar's diss track is now being played at clubs. Facts. No matter who you For all of them Drake stands who were saying about how, oh, Kendrick don't bring in those bops and whatnot, nigga. The fact that this this track was not only number one on Spotify in one day, but it was number one in a week and whatnot. And the fact that this bitch is not only by that, but it's played in the clubs all around the world. Not only just in LA, but in every other shit. Yeah, 
Drake definitely, and still to this day, he's currently getting it the worst. With that freaking Wagwan Delilah shit, nah. You saw, like I said at the start of this, y'all were clowning on this nigga. Hey, if you still, like I said, if you haven't, go check it out. <laughs> Man, Drake is done. For me, he's just done right now cuz I don't care Spotify and also became the most streamed song in a week in Spotify history. And in Drake fashion, Kendrick Lamar's diss track is now being Favorite played at clubs. clubs. No matter who you are or how many records you've sold, there's no one that's exempt from getting embarrassed in a beef. So rappers should always proceed with caution before they start one, right. as it might just be a horrible idea. Another embarrassing rap beef is Eminem vs Benzino, mm. but if you guys are interested in that video, you can click it on the screen. Shit, I might watch that one. But hey, shout out to Ruesta. Hey, basically, like you just said, be cautious of who you're trying to start a beef with, nigga. Because you never know when they might have some real shit on you. And boy, oh boy, you do not want them to air that shit out on you. But with that being said, y'all, Y'all let me know what y'all thought about this down in the comments below. Who you think? Like I said, I know what. For me, I think Drake got it the worst of all of this. Currently, he is still. But you let me know who you think. If not from this video, of any other rap beefs that you've heard about. Who y'all think got it worse down in the comments below. And hey, if you made it to the end of this reaction, comment down below. Comment down below Ether. And that makes me know you made it to the end. But it's been your boy Humble Ziggy signing out. Stay positive. Keep the vibes up.